Hi everyone, I'm Linda Shelton Fell, and this is Moments of Hope, a show featuring people who turn pain into purpose to do good things in the world. And before I introduce tonight's guest, I want to give a heartfelt thank you to Neil Feigner of the New York Times. Neil was able to step in and contact Facebook to help us resolve a hacking situation that we had been dealing with on Grief the Unspoken for weeks. And we had reported it through all the proper channels. Uh, it was really a frustrating situation. And the New York Times contacted me, did an interview, and they then contacted the Facebook and got it resolved. And so I want to give a big shout out to the New York Times for helping us turn a wrong into a right and restore grief the unspoken here on Facebook. And so tonight's show with the 4th of July coming up is about what to do when you see an impaired driver. And our guest tonight is Candace Leitner. Candace, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's nice to be on Facebook yeah. Live. It's nice to have you. And uh, you are the founder of MAD, Mothers Against Drunk Driving, and you're also the founder of We Save Lives. And your story really begins a number of years ago when your 18-month-old daughter, Serena, <laughs> no? Oh, are you going to go way back then? We're going way back okay. because most people know the story about Carrie. Correct. But what they don't know is that you've actually had three children who have Correct. been impacted by an impaired driver. Correct. And so your 18 month old daughter, Serena, mm -hmm. your car, when she, with her in it, was hit by a, um, a drunk driver who, who rear-ended your car, is that correct? Well, actually it was my mother's car and Carrie and Serena were in the back in seat belts in those days, which weren't nearly adequate like they are now. And it turned out to be a three car pileup. And unfortunately my mother's car was in the middle and it was a drunk driver that hit her from behind, threw her into another car. And at that time, Serena was injured, not Carrie. Okay, and, and, the, and they were, they're twins. Identical. And, and they were 18 months old. Correct. And six years later, an impaired driver ran over your son, Travis. Actually, um, that's probably about right. He was four at the time and she was on prescription meds and distracted actually. She had turned around to tend to the children in the back seat of the car and she was an unlicensed driver and she ran completely over him actually. And he suffered permanent brain damage and um, life-threatening injuries. He was in a coma for four days. We oh didn't know he was gonna make it. And so each day was just, you know, waiting to see if he would wake up and if he would be okay. And we're very fortunate because considering the severity of his injuries and the fact that we had to replace his skull, he really is a, a pretty good guy. Wow, mm -hmm. goodness. Well, I'm glad that he survived. Mm -hmm. But the third time your family was impacted by an impaired driver, you weren't so lucky. Correct. In 1980, Carrie, your daughter, mm -hmm. was walking to a church carnival mm -hmm. when she was hit by a drunk driver. And the impact threw her body 125 feet in the air. That's right. And she died. Right. And four days later, one day after her funeral, you founded Mothers Against Drunk Driving. That's what great. spurred you? to take that step? Actually, the, the day that I learned that the man who killed her was arrested, I ran into the California Highway Patrol as we were all going out to dinner and they were yellow taping the area where she had been hit. And I had just gotten off the phone with them. They called to tell me because it was the hit and run that they found him. And I asked the driver of my car to pull over so I could talk to the CHP. And I did, and he did, and I went over and talked to them and I told them who I was and that I um, had learned that they had arrested the man and they seemed to think I knew more than I did. So they said, well, I guess they told you that he was drunk at the time he hit your daughter and I 
was like, sure, although they hadn't told me any of that. And then they said, well, I guess they told you he was out on bail from another hit and run drunk driving crash. And I went, yes, again, not knowing any of that. They said, well, I guess they told you he'd been arrested three times before for drunk driving and that he was still driving on a valid California driver's license. And I was going, yes, yes, even though I knew none of that. And so I, when I, as I'm learning this and becoming more appalled and shocked and angry, I said to the California Highway Patrol officer,